let's build a dipole. Hey, welcome to the shack. In today's video, I'm going to go over the building of the dipole that I currently use as my main antenna. Well, actually it's my only antenna. Um, this antenna has got me 26 countries, all 50 U.S. states, and 6 continents. And I say that just to show that this antenna works. Um, and I usually may, mainly use 40 and 20, which is what I built it for. But it will also cover 15, 12, 10, and 6. So let's get started. To start with, I'll go through all the parts I used to build this antenna. I've made a list of all the parts and put it in the description, but all these parts can be picked up at any hardware store like Lowe's, Home Depot, or Ace. First is the enclosure. I used a one gang PVC box with half inch hubs. And to go along with that, I got a weatherproof cover. Next is an SO239 connector and four number six screws with one nylon lock nut. Two half inch PVC pipe butt connectors, one half inch PVC to half inch pipe thread adapter, one Acme thread to half inch pipe thread adapter, which you can get from Buddy Pole, four 3 8 by 24 Allen cap screws. I recommend stainless steel for those. Two 3 8 by 24 coupler nuts. Four 3 8 I ring terminals for the size of wire you're going to use. Two half inch PVC to C PVC adapters. And finally, about one foot of PVC pipe. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take our CP PVC bushings and I'm going to use a uh, step drill to wallow out the holes so that our coupler nuts will fit in there snugly. And once we get them and get our nuts set in tightly, um, we're, we'll go back and either hot glue or use epoxy to seal them in. I was originally going to use these 3 8 by 24 couplers and bolts because this would re readily accept any standard antenna end would screw right in here like a buddy pole or a fire stick or you know what have you but they wouldn't quite work so what I had to end up doing is I had some of these 3 8 by 18 and show here just for comparison 3 8 by 18 are about an inch and three quarter long and the 3 8 by 24 are about an inch and an eighth long and the problem was trying to go into this box is get to stick these couplers in here real quick they're a good tight fit and that's what you want but when they go in now and you probably can't see this too good on camera but they don't go in far enough for the bolts so what I did was I just got some plain old half inch PVC uh, I can't even remember what these are it's been so long I think they're just couplers that would pop them in there and then a half inch PVC pipe would, would plug into that or an adapter that's what it was it was an adapter to go to a different size but I had to drill it out same thing as I did with the other ones so that these would fit in there and see it's 
sticks out just a little bit there and also sticks out a little bit there which is enough to get the bolt in Let's see if we can do this these little boxes are tight anyway as you can see you can be able to screw the nut in there and then have the wires connected onto it so inch and three quarters or whatever box you get you may just want to measure it and make sure you get the couplers long enough okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some epoxy and get those locked in there real good you'll be right back one thing you really want to remember <coughs> is when using any kind of an epoxy this is a two-part epoxy here I don't remember where I've had I got this I've had this thing just about forever I've got a few tubes of these but you definitely want to wear gloves because this stuff can get nasty And I'm basically just setting it just inside there. I'll let that shit harden up. And basically all I did was just let the end of that stick out of the shoulder part of that just a hair. And that should be enough to allow me to put on the bolts and when I attach the wires later. Okay, so while that is all, is all drying... I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take a piece of PVC pipe and drill holes in this and go all the way through it. And that will allow for our mounting section. And basically what I'm gonna do is take a coupler and can make sure it's in all the way. And then set that on there. Put a mark on the pipe the end of the coupler and then kind of estimate where the edge of the box is on that side and then I'll measure how much is actually inside and add a little bit more so make sure everything's all tight okay so as it turns out see I got my marks there it's an inch and three-quarter in so inside the couplers they'll go an inch and <clears throat> an inch and three quarter in and I'll probably cut off uh, make this shorter about an eighth of an inch that way I make sure everything is good and tight so as it turns out PVC pipe is about seven and seven eighths of an inch in diameter so I need to make a hole in this I need to make a hole in this box, seven eighths of an inch on both sides, straight. Also, keeping in mind that I'm going to have the, uh, I need to make another hole for the SO239 on one side. Now that we got our holes drilled in our box. We're going to throw in our SO239. So to prepare this SO239, I'm using just a small piece of 12 gauge solid wire. And I stripped off a little bit of the end there so I can wrap it around. And the goal is just to create a little coil that fits over top of that and then we'll solder that. And for that little tag end right there, we'll just go ahead and snip that off. And 
dress it up a little bit so it's all neat and tight. All right. Now we're ready to saw. And on the backs of one of these screws, we'll have the nut to hook up our negative side. Wiring up the SO239 was a little bit tricky, mainly because there's not a, I mean there's a little bit of room in there, but not really a whole lot. And basically we just got the shielded side going to one end and the center connector going to the other end. So for the elements, I use 12 gauge stranded wire. Uh, the 20 meter leg is 16 feet 4 inches on each side. And the 40 meter leg is 28 feet 3 inches on each side. And then I just connected the two wires together with an eyelet and a little bit of heat shrink. And I soldered each connection inside. So for the elements of this dipole, I got the two wires into this eyelet and they're soldered and heat shrinked. Hopefully that helps with the uh, tension on it because it is going to have a little bit of tension on it. And I've got five of these spreaders that are about seven inches long with three inches in between each element. Top one's for 40, bottom one's for 20. And I've got it just tied to that tree. And then way down here, I just got it tied to the fence post just to help me get it all tensioned right. And you see all the spreaders in there. And the 20 meter element terminates right there and then I've got a little bit of power, power cord just to help kind of keep everything tensioned and come down here with a little insulator and then I just got that run and tied off to there just to help keep everything tensioned once it's up and I did that for each side And I'll get the other side done, and then we'll put it up and see what our SWRs are. Also, on these uh, on these spreaders, I took a little bit of paracord and tied a knot, pretty much, basically just on each side of them, just to keep them from sliding up and down the wire. And I did that on all of the insulators except for the ones at the feed point which let's see if I can get a good picture of this uh, so we got the wire ends attached to the feed point and then I've got some paracord running through 
these little spreaders just to keep tension off of pulling too much on these on this end here and as you can see I just ran them to the opposite sides of the box and I did have to drill those holes open about a uh, I used a quarter inch drill bit to drill these holes open so that the paracord would fit through there but That's a pretty good shot of how that went right there. And now it's time to put it up in the air. Well, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. If you feel so inclined, leave a comment. Be sure to check the description for any pertinent information given in the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when I make new videos. So enjoy your radio and we'll see you next time.